This Lexus LX570 is the perfect example of what knowing your customers truly looks like. I have family in town, so I rented this Lexus, the largest SUV Lexus makes, and I immediately regretted it. But more on that in a second. So while I have this car, I want to answer some of the raging questions that a lot of you have. What is this? Is this a Land Cruiser? How much is it? How does it compare to some of the other vehicles in this segment? When was the last one made, etc.? So this Lexus was made from 2008 all the way to 2021, having made two facelifts on this vehicle, one in 2011 and another one in 2015. Pretty cool tailgate right here. Now, what's awesome about this, and I'll show you more later, it's powered, but it's also manual. You can open it quick or slow. It's up to you, it's amazing. Follow me. Let's check in the power plan on this vehicle, which is amazing. A 5.7 liter V8 producing 383 horsepower and 403 pound feet of torque. Uh, what's impressive is that 90% of that power gets delivered within 3600 RPM. Pretty amazing power plan. Inside the LX, uh, it's, it's a very comfortable place to be. I'm quite surprised uh, with the interior. Now, as I mentioned, this vehicle ran all the way from 2008 to 2021. So that's a very, very long range. Technology changes quickly. And towards the very end of the run of this vehicle, it was lacking behind on technology. But amazing interior design in here, filled with luxurious finishes. And uh, it, it's very intricate. Lots of buttons in here. Uh, and it is, as I mentioned before, just the perfect example of what knowing your customers is really like. Oh, and we'll get into that more. In here, you'll find semi aniline leather wrapped seats as well as some leather in the door panels, bottom pieces of the dashboard. I'm surprised that this is actually fake. This is just foam on top of the dashboard. Now I can see how this is uh, more durable than actual leather and I would know because on my Range Rover, this is a pain in the ass to have to maintain all the time, lubricating that leather, making sure that it doesn't crack. So I can see that for durability purposes, but it just, I don't know, irks me a little bit. Now you have that difference there. They should have padded the dashboard up top. And I believe the new LX600 does come with a padded dashboard. You have your climate control and uh, entertainment control in here, as well as the old school mouse pad here that controls your entertainment system. Now, obviously a lot of people complain about this and it has, you know, it has aged not very well, let's just say but it's, it still works okay. You have your drive modes and your uh, off-road capability buttons right in this area. This is where you control your locking differential, uh, hill descent, uh, crawl dynamics, all these kinds of things are right in here as well as your transmission uh, settings for high, high or low as well as managing your suspension for uh, racing or lowering your suspension. The steering wheel here, all wood. Everything in here is actual wood, which I like. And uh, you have some real world gauges right in here. A lot of people complain about, you know, having more screens in your car. I, for one, I work in front of a screen all day long. I don't wanna get in my car and look just at a bunch of random screens. I actually enjoy the intricacy of an analog gauge. Very, very cool touch. Now this, yes. The entertainment center is obviously very outdated. And uh, you know, I don't really have a problem with how everything works, except that I would like to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to be able to easily connect your phone. Most of the time, people don't use these things. You know, you just go in here for radio and set it up one time and forget about it. Even your climate control, this car is equipped with concierge climate. So you, you set your settings, you press this button, it does everything for you, you don't have to worry about it. So in reality, nobody really cares about this entertainment center. Just give me Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you sync up your phone, navigation, audio, everything, you're done. 
in the back. Initially, this may seem like a, you know your normal uh, luxury vehicle back here. Leather wrapped uh, door panels, semi-aniline leather seats. Very comfortable. You have vents on the ceiling for your air conditioning, and then you have sun visors right here for those cloudy or sunny days. And then right here in the middle, you have your own climate controls right in here for both passengers in the back. So you can adjust heating and cooling for your seats, the air back here, and you have a little, you know, center space in here to put away your phone, etc. Then in here, you also have your cup holders that come out and you can put, you know, two cups right in here. All the way back in the third road pretty amazing here obviously this been a full-size you know body on frame SUV uh, you're not gonna have a lot of space as you do with the typical platform you know cross type uh, SUVs where you have a lot of space underneath no not here but you you do have foldable seats here that tuck away and then you have buttons here to do that watch this so now you fold them automatically and then you can also retract them to the side with these buttons pretty neat now it takes away some of your cargo space because you have to have the seats here tucked away but you still have quite a bit of space in here for carrying you know large items now to put them down again uh, you know use the two buttons here to put them down however Getting the seats back up, you do have to pull them manually. You have these ropes here to get them in to place. And here you have two storage bins. Nothing too big, but you can store you know, small items, toolkits in here. Now driving the LX, this is where things get interesting and where the old school part comes into place. Even this shifter right here, a lot of manufacturers nowadays have an electronic shifter that sends a signal to the transmission, not here. This is actually a manual shifter with linkage to the transmission and you can actually hear it. Now this is completely rugged. Now these trucks are all school with a touch of luxury. So for those of you who are, you know, have become accustomed to Toyota durability and reliability, but you want a little bit more of, you know, plush leather and very supple, comfortable ride. Well, this is the vehicle for you. You don't really care about all these electronic gadgets nowadays that everybody wants to have. You know the functionality is there. You set it, forget it, but you want something that is going to last, that is never going to let you stranded anywhere. These are the types of cars that people drive in the harshest of conditions in the world. Deserts, mountains, North Pole. This is the kind of car you want. Now this car does come with multiple Sport Plus uh, settings. I don't know who would want to use it in this car, but it's available. If I put this car in Sport Plus or uh, Sport S Plus and go into the manual mode, let's do a, a quick 0 to 60 run here. I mean, it sounds pretty good. The nice thing is that this 3UR FE engine, the V8 in this car, has that nice sound to it. Now, Paddle shifters, I don't know why they equipped this car with paddle shifter. I can't imagine that somebody who wanted to put it in manual, they can potentially be, you know, driving over hills, uh, very mountainous uh, terrain, and they wanted to have better control of the shifts. Well, you can do that here. The plus side, uh, it does not shift automatically for you. It'll just cut ignition and then it'll just die down, but it will not shift for you if you have it in, in manual mode. Now, in terms of value, guys, this truck is, they typically range around, you know, 40 to 50,000. When you compare that to like a Range Rover, which is, you know, 30 to 50, 
uh, and then a G wagon, which is seventy to eighty thousand, somewhere about, with a comparable, you know, e year. This is just a great, great deal. The ride in this thing is pretty comfortable. You can still sense that body on frame, you know, feel when you go over certain bumps and stuff. But it is a very plush ride. It is a very Lexus drive. You feel like a king when you're driving one of these. You're sitting pretty high up, plushy leather interior, very refined in here, very quiet. Move, peasants, get out of my way. Move. Now, one thing that surprised me is how stable this is on corners. I've taken a few corners, and uh, because of all these mechanisms that they've added to the suspension, it's quite stable on the corners, but still very plush around town. Heads up display right up top, gives you some basic information, gives you your speed, direction, speed limit, and if you adjust the volume on your radio, it actually gives you that information as well. Now going back to my previous comments about regretting uh, getting into this truck, and that is because I quite like it. I think I want one of these guys. I think I do.